Okay, so today's episode is going to be about ACES CG in RenderMan. Welcome back to Meshman Studio. My name is Peter Avestein and uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification. In today's episode, I want to take a look at how we can use ACES CG in RenderMan for Maya. Because there's a few problems here that we need to understand when using ACES in Maya at the moment. And it mainly surrounds how we can use textures in a predictable way, especially gamma encoded textures. Without further ado, let's dive into it now. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the concepts here in RenderMan and mainly here RenderMan for Maya. So we have set up OCIO here as in previous episodes. So link in the description. Here we see I have uh, OCIO here set up using that uh, environment variable that I defined in an earlier episode. Let's take a look here um, what we need to do. So first off, some of the concepts. The main thing to have in mind here is we have a few problems at the moment in RenderMan if we're gonna use uh, ACES CG when it comes to using textures. So I wanna touch base on that and see the concept. So let's dive into here, IPShade and just create a uh, BXDF pixel surface, for example. Zoom in here and take a look. So let's say that we are choosing colors here now. So that's something we, we can, can do here and it's converted. So the mixing color space here, for example, you can see here, you're choosing a rec 709 color space here in this slider here. But when we have uh, images coming from outside, essentially in ACES, if you have something in an color space, for example, sRGB, you want to convert it into ACES CG. And to do that in using Arnold, for example, and Maya, you have uh, these um, Maya nodes here. Let's take uh, something here, uh, file, file node, for example. And you can see here the color space settings here is something we can override and say input device transform. So this is something that's not supported using RenderMan at the moment, but I've heard from the forums that they will add support to this. Um, so yeah, but what you would do if you would have an sRGB image and get it into an ACES CG, you would say uh, input, let's see, utility, it's a lot of them here, utility, sRGB texture. So this is the correct input transform you need to set. If you would use the my file node in uh, RenderMan, this is not supported and uh, I've checked it. The same goes to Pixar texture. Pixar texture read node. And you can see here we have a linearize and this one essentially linearize from sRGB to linear sRGB, but we need to take it to ACES CG. So let's take a look at some diagrams so we understand this and then take a look at the concepts uh, we can see when it goes wrong and how we can fix it. So any texture that's in sRGB essentially needs to be converted into ACES CG at the moment until we get proper support for input uh, IDTs and input display transforms, I think, I believe it's called. Yeah, so let's jump over and look at some uh, web pages and diagrams uh, before we take a look at the problem. I'm gonna link to this page, I did it uh, in an early episode, I linked to this page by Chris Brayon. It's an excellent resource for understanding some of the concepts about ACES. So this is what happens. We have an sRGB texture, we apply an IDT, so this will be the utility sRGB textures and it converts it into the ACES CG render space that we use to render in RenderMan. And to understand the, the spaces, let's take a look at those as well here. 
Okay, so this is kind of what happens when you use a texture. So this black uh, triangle here is sRGB color space and this one is ACCG and I believe this one here, the, the larger, even larger one is actually the original ACES proved to be a bit too wide to uh, be really useful for rendering because it had a potential to create negative values essentially. So that's why ACES CG was developed for CG rendering, I believe. But yeah, so then again, let's say that you have a, a green color here that's maxing out on uh, the sRGB spectrum, something you got from a texture resource for example just just one in green but just looking here at uh, the ACCG one that location there is nowhere near the total spectrum here so that's why input display transform was created to take the sRGB and uh, kind of in a way remap it into the ACCG world so it behaves predictable and uh, this is something now that lacks at the moment in the random and texture read nodes. So that's why we need to take a look at first the problem here, how we can, so, uh, what, so we can identify it and know what we're looking for and then how we can remedy that using conversions of our textures. So let's take a look here at some concepts here around this sRGB and ACES conversions and textures and all that jazz. So we have here a image here. It's a mega scan uh, texture. So it's uh, the, the color here and it's a JPEG. So we can see here it's an albedo JPEG. So most likely this has a sRGB or Rec 709 kind of color space embedded into it. And if I close this one here, or can just hide it temporarily, let me see here the render here. This is um, something that's, uh, I have two shaders here, one is sRGB here and one called ACES CG. So let's take a look here how it's set up and what's going on. My albedo, you see here in this, the sRGB network here use this uh, jpeg image so that's cool let's take a look at the same here albedo aces and see here i have converted this and that's something we're gonna take a look at after i've demonstrated the issue that we see so in my uh, albedo here on the srgb side in this multi texture so this is a round cube so i'm applying uh, a set of textures, so I'm, I'm applying uh, the color here, my bump, specular roughness and feeding it in here to my shader and I have this round cube manifold so I can demonstrate here, I can just, I need to actually to apply this, so select and uh, let's apply this one to, you can see now it's gonna start to shift, it, the, the colors becomes really funky there but uh, let's take a look here my set is the one you can see that it will start to change we'll see that it repeats more set this to 10 it's gonna look like some kind of you're gonna, you're gonna see quite a repeating pattern here now because it's uh, tiled a lot uh, so this is essentially like a tree planner projection uh, in texturing uh, yeah um, Going back here to my um, multi map, I use this sRGB and on the texture parameters. In this, I said linearize. So now it's linearizing, but it's linearizing into linear sRGB instead of uh, converting it to ACES. And that's that's what needs to happen. We need to have a choice and specify what input we are want to linearize into what color space, essentially. Uh, looking at um, this, so if I now apply my, uh, the, the correct one here first, again, select assign materials, so you can shift back here. Looking at this, we can see here, if I go to my uh, image here that's converted correctly to uh, the albedo 
uh, here is then EXR that I've converted in Nuke or DaVinci Resolve. Soloing this one here, we can see here the raw image. So this one is has converted from sRGB into utility sRGB texture color space. And that's the input transform that needs to be applied. So let's go back here to my image. We can see they look kind of similar. This utility sRGB texture is never gonna look exactly like the source image. It usually becomes a bit darker and that's something that is actually correct according to ACES standards. But now let's take a look at the same here on uh, this side where I have this sRGB that's linearized using this linearized button and see how the actually source texture looks like. It's gonna be quite a big difference. And here we can see, you can see here the it's it's very different and we get a total different color hue almost. And that's the difference between sRGB and ACES CG. So this one is essentially now set up to work in a linearized sRGB workflow rather than ACES CG workflow. And that's something that we need to look at. And let's now jump over to uh, and dissect the problem, looking at some Macbeth shorts and as well as uh, actually converting uh, some textures as well. Okay, I've downloaded uh, from the ACES repository GitHub, we have these uh, Macbeth shorts and uh, let's take a look here. So this one here is an ACES CG Macbeth short and uh, it looks nice here. And this one here is using uh, S linearized SR sRGB. So you can see it's switching between those two. The, the colors shift quite considerably there. And that's part of the problem that we saw earlier because this one here is a uh, linear sRGB, but it's displayed in ACES using uh, the ACES. So we essentially get a gamma shift or ca color transform. And that's something that needs to be corrected when we use the random man workflow at the moment using the texture read nodes where we can't set the input display transform. So let's take a look at how we can uh, visualize this, what's going on. So let's take an OC, OCIO color space and put it here. So this color space is a way to tell what color space this comes from and what color space we want to convert it to. So out is going to be synlinear ACS CG and my color space in the project, if I hit S button here, is set up to OCIO and we can here, see here a float file synlinear is ACS CG. Going back here. So the input transform we want to set, okay, you're a uh, linear sRGB. So we have to find now, this is essentially what needs to be uh, happening in the read node. We have to have this choice to, so yeah, a utility, linear, there you have it. So now if I switch between those two, the aces here and this one, you see they look identical. So that's what's need to happen. And let's, yeah, so essentially what I do, if I would take this image here, albedo JPEG, the same that we looked at before, you, what I set here, I set to um, my input transform on the color space node itself. It needs to be set to Mari int utility SRB texture. That's, uh, it's picking up essentially my Mari config here, but you could also say uh, utility, utility sRGB texture is gonna be the same thing, uh, but I have a role for it here because my OCIO uh, config has defined the role. So I can just take Mori utility sRGB texture. That's the same, essentially it's just named different and write this out. In my case here, I am on a uh, non-commercial here, a new, so I can't write it out to EXRs in a higher format than like 
10, 24, 20, 24. So what I did, I actually did this in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump over now and take a look in DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve is for free. Uh, so you can do color space transform. It's a bit trickier, but um, yeah, uh, let's take a look at how we can do that. Yeah, so it's not going to be about uh, DaVinci Resolve here per se, but just some settings here to get it up and running here. So if I go to project settings here, the first thing here I'm going to do is to actually go to timeline resolution here and say, uh, let's say custom. So 496 by 496. Um, and then I'm going to want to go to color management, say here, instead of color science, DaVinci, Y RGBA, I'm going to go to ACES CCT. I'm going to set this to ACES 1.1. And my essentially this one I want to set to input transform, uh, input device transform. I'm choosing ACES CG uh, in my case here. Just to visualize it, we can set it temporarily to sRGB. So this is actually the LUT you want to use at the moment so in, in at the moment let's say that we know that the image was srgb so let's say srgb this is something when i export it i have to set it to accg but let's take a look here okay so here's my image and it looks strange here we can go here to um, input aces and we don't have this utility uh, srgb texture by default here so what i do i go to my edit page drag this image into the edge edge page so it's there you can see it's still uh, looking strange there so what i do i go to the fusion tab jump into it and now we are presented here with the uh, like a null graph so i go to if i hit shift tab and start to type oc io let's see color space so this one and I'm gonna pipe this into there and pipe this so I get, uh, so this one is the essentially like a node based compositor as well, uh, where uh, my, uh, on this side is the input. This is the image coming from the timeline. I'm now putting in color space transform in between and then that, that's the output that we see there. So I need to shift now here and saying the source uh, space I want that, that to be utility sRGB texture, the same as we put there in uh, Nuke. And now you can see now it's converted here and the, the output space, we want this to actually be ACCG because our timeline is ACCG. So now you see here output space ACCG and our timeline is ACCG. So now we can go out here from my uh, conversion here, go back to edit and look at it. Um, there you see now we pop there and uh, this is what we want to export but if I export now I'm gonna burn the sRGB LUT into it because remember here down here I set my color management to the output device transform sRGB so what I do when I export this now I just temporarily go here and switch this to ACCG save this one and now we're gonna see after a little while here now we see here now it's it's dark and this is essentially the what's gonna be converted out what what i'm gonna export so if i go here and just set uh, go to my deliver tab this is where you can export something what i do is just uh, set in and out so i and o at the same frame and go here to export options i want to actually export to file, export EXR and my resolution 4K, 4K and choosing a location. Let's go to my source folder here and say um, solve output copper, add to render queue and hit render. So now we can go to that directory and yeah so there is the converter dxr and this one is the one i read into my texture read node instead of using the linear srgb option uh, that's by default because that one is going to linearize it into a linear srgb rather than the aces cg color space so now this one 
is good to go for rendering and I guess these funky numbers here we could take away like so okay so here's a, a scene and uh, yeah I tracked uh, a backplate that I shot on my uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and we can see here in this case here I've lit it with uh, an HDR that I also captured at the same time and it's linear sRGB. So I rendered this twice, one with linear sRGB so I, I just uh, took the um, HDR that I assembled. As my camera is set to shoot sRGB on the color space, the embedded color space is sRGB but in its linear form. So we're gonna see the difference between converting this in the same fashion that we did uh, with my source textures, the linear sRGB, converting this HDR to ACES as well. So we can see here. So this one is the correct one where I've actually converted the HDR from linear sRGB to ACCG and this is the out of the bat just using the HDR without converting it. So you can see here it's it's a, it's a bit of a difference there and it's quite important to actually convert your HDR images to the render color space ACCG as well. And that's something that I hope also will support it on the light. If you use textures you need to be able to in the same fashion as in a texture read specify what input color space or where it comes from if this is gonna be properly so at the moment the only way is to actually go here and um, this one is converted to ACES actually let's take a look here if you can see the difference on the preview uh, so let's take a look at how we can do this and see the difference where it you can see that uh, in the sRGB linear sRGB it's kind of oversaturated and, and a bit unrealistic the colors if you look through an ACES slot compared to when it's set converted into the linear ACES so let's actually jump into a nuke and the same thing applies in DaVinci Resolve as uh, in uh, nuke so let's take nuke now okay so here in uh, nuke let's take a look at uh, so this one here is imported it's the one that came straight out when I stitched this uh, HDR. So this one is has linear sRGB incorporated into it. And this image here is converted to ACES. You can see if I switch between them, you can see here it's quite a big difference. The sky is becoming, when I look through this sRGB lot here, you can see the sky is oh, yes, super saturated and look very unrealistic compared to when I have converted into the ACC color space looking through this sRGB lot you can see that it looks more realistic the colors is not just Mickey Mouse and, and all of that so essentially what I did I took this linear sRGB OCIO color space I tick this one and I say in I want to have a color space utility linear sRGB now you can see here switching between those two that's the same so that's the color space transform you need to do on a uh, linear sRGB if your camera would shoot um, rec 709 color space to something else it would be instead of having utility linear sRGB you would need to have an utility linear rec 709 it's it will it probably be very little difference between those two because rec 709 and sRGB is almost identical except rec 709 I think has a linear in the beginning if you will think of a curve the the beginning bit where it's most um, dark it's a linear rather than uh, um, like a curve so that's the difference so yeah you will see very little difference on this but yeah that's um, the, what you need to do to convert it and uh, if you want to do this in DaVinci Resolve it's essentially the same as when converting the textures in the earlier chapter except you need to set it to utility linear sRGB so that's what you need to do on HDR images to get them to render correctly in RenderMan for Maya at this moment before we have the input device transform checkbox 
on our uh, inputs for lights and texture reads. Okay, so we don't want to use a plate in ACCG in RenderMan. So we need a plate. So I shot this plate here that I was intending to track something into here in my back garden here. So let's first off, we just want to do a slight grade here to get something different out of this. So in my case, I'm going to do a serial node here and start my grading here in this one. Let's say that we want to raise the, the highlights there just a tad and uh, maybe the blacks and mid-tones. Maybe take down the um, saturation just a tad. No, that's fine. Let's uh, met, mess with the temperature and see if we can make something a lot, just a bit warmer like that. But let's say that this is what we want to export. Um, I'm just gonna insert another. This is probably not something you need to do, but I'm do it anyway. Just add my a color space transform there. Nothing should change. I go to my deliver tab, set in and out there on uh, on this frame here and let's take this one to source images let's say uh, plate is this cg there you go select folder aces plate and actually we want to first go here and say ACCG there, save this ACES plate and add to render queue and now we want to just render this out like so. So now let's take it in to render man for Maya but first off I want to just go here and pop this back to sRGB because I'm gonna use the same lot in in Maya so we can compare. So this is how it looks. Let's go back to the color page so we can uh, mess with this and jump over to Maya. Okay, so here I have just made a plate and a constant shader so we can see it rendered. Let's now browse for that plate there. Okay, so now it's rendering here so let's compare now. Uh, let's zoom in here. Let's actually take something here that has some colors and stuff there maybe this pot there just gonna place this next to it here so there we see they match pretty well there let's see here if I go back here to my grade here we can see That's the grade I did. So if I turn this serial node off here, you can see that's what my camera shot. This is with the grade there and it's exported out. And we are looking through an sRGB lot here and we are looking through an sRGB lot there. So that's uh, important. And uh, yeah, so that's how I export my um, ACES plates out using uh, DaVinci Resolve and uh, in import them into RenderMan and they match pretty well. I just want to take a look here at this project first before we run into RenderMan. So this is the project that I uh, used the plate and I tracked it and let's take a look here what we have. It's a material texturing here in Mori. What I'm exporting, I'm exporting all of these out as uh, ACES CG here if I would uh, tick all of these out here you see here i'm exporting all my channels out at accg and let's take a look here the flat textures on all of these here's the the diffuse specular edge so that's the specular edge ir map so yeah it's gonna be hard to see some of the values station coefficient the same so this is i'm using physical specular in this one that we can see uh Everything that's metallic essentially gets value and this is the painted part. The black one doesn't have any specular extinction coefficient roughness map. So I'm exporting all of these out as 
Asus CG textures. That's the roughness. And lastly, the bump here. It's gonna be gray with some values there. We have scratches and and some of the the flaky paint and stuff. But yeah, uh, that's kind of the textures on this uh, sphere here that I just made for this tracking purpose. So yeah, let's dive into the project. So here's the the look they've seen. So it, it's very basic. So let's take a look at the hype shade here. Well, it's rendering here on the side a bit. Yeah, so the images I exported out from uh, Mori. Here we have the color. So I'm not linearizing anything. Everything is Aces CG exported out of the bat. So color map, spe specular edge color, IR, extinction coefficient, specular roughness. And the shade I use physical specular here. So it's all set up to use physical spec. I have a displacement and I actually have two displacements. I use the, you know, the, the bump displacement or the, the height map uh, as uh, the base. And then I have another here, the, the actual, like um, I made some welding seams here. I made an additional displacement around some details like seams. So that's just a, a grayscale image as well. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, so that's uh, the the seams that are painted. So yeah, then I just took it into I in the into the scene where I have it uh, the camera tracked, and I use my HDR that's also converted into the correct color space, and rendered it out. Then I rendered out a separate pass with shadows from it. So I I used shadow capture, but that's for another tutorial really. So yeah, I just wanted to. Do get a brief rundown so I, I guess we can just uh, look at the tracking scene as well briefly and here's the, the scene here with the, the back plate and track so yeah what I did I run out with my DSLR and shoot the crap out of my garden here so and then I stitch it in the photo scanning program and made a, a rough replica using just planes essentially out of the garden from that photo scan. So I had something to do with reflections and all that. So I shaded all of these surfaces as well and lit it. And then I rendered out a separate path for shadows. So let's now actually dive back into DaVinci Resolve and Fusion to see how I come this. Okay, so here in DaVinci Resolve, let's take it to the full loop here. So we have graded it, we have uh, exported textures, we have imported textures and all of that jazz. Just take a quick look here at the, the comp. So yeah, I'm not a compositor, but if I now go here and look at, let's enable this one so we can see the so we have a ground plane here, render out to catch the shadows. I also have an a, a alpha for the shadows there. And there we have the isolated asset on its own. So I'm merging this together here first. This one, shadows, and then we add the sphere on top. And then I have a rotor here, whatever. This one is the fire pit there. In the beginning, it's actually in front of the series. I, I did a quick roto. I could definitely do a better job in the roto there. But yeah, it's essentially just to have something to demonstrate. This is the output. So it's it's very simple uh, script here. If you want to, we can now, after the fact here, start to treat this, grade it. I actually added some color grain here. We can take a look at some 35 mil color grain here, then before and after here. And maybe we wanna do some creative stuff here. Let's take, maybe, uh, let's take, do something. Shadows, cool, and highlights, warm. Something like this. Maybe we wanna desaturate it as well, just a bit. And some more contrast, whatever. So yeah, uh, that's kind of um, the, the process for that. And some of the workflows regarding ACES in Renderman at this time. So 
I guess uh, whenever we get an update with all of the input transforms and stuff, I will make a revision and a second version out of this when we can actually have the full uh, support for ACES in the actual texture reads and all of that. I believe that's going to be in an upcoming version. So yeah, uh, that's it for this time. If you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. See you in the channel. Bye bye.